Hello and welcome to our daily sketching routine. Thanks for joining me today. It is Wednesday, September 4th, 2024, and today's topic will be tips on drawing the mouth. And there'll probably be more than one video about this because the mouth is, it's got a lot to, because it's not, it's the most mobile thing on the face. Uh, so to begin with, uh, from yesterday, we did the nose and uh, I had started to draw some of the mouth in there and so we'll begin with that like the the mouth is closed and talk about the the proportions um so if you draw our usual top and bottom point and then draw a center line so you should be getting used to this if you've been practicing along with me. And I like setting up the proportions because not only is it helpful for drawing, but it it's a warm up. It's a good way to get into it. So let's say that yesterday we said that this was the nose. So let's say that this is the mouth. So that'll be the mouth area. So that means that this is the bottom of the nose and this is the chin. Okay. All right, I got interrupted. So where was I? Um, so yeah, this is the basic proportions of front view. So we're gonna say that this is the bottom of the nose and the chin and then uh, from the middle here, we'll figure out the mouth and um, I mean like I said there's a lot going on uh, usually uh, if we do the, the proportions here although you can approach it pretty simply so that's about half So generally speaking, it's going to be thirds, where the mouth actually opens. And then for now, we'll just kind of indicate, so if this is the width of the nose, the corner of the mouth will be past that. And usually it lines up with the inner corner of the eye, but this is, that's not always like visually speaking the case, but generally speaking. So let's just start very basically and very simply. So one thing you'll notice is that just by doing this, um, you pretty much have drawn the mouth, which is a, a nice thing. And let's work on these proportions here. So if this is the mouth, the actual like meeting of the lips, you're going to get a lot of variation between the upper and bottom lip. But just for now, we'll indicate the upper lip and the bottom lip and the bottom lip will be bigger than the the upper lip but then the proportions of those is what's going to fluctuate and but then usually because of the um, the skull like that part of the anatomy the mouth will be pretty constant but then there's all sorts of stuff because of the muscle the surface anatomy same with the chin, like the 
So it's good to understand the proportions as the bone structure, but then what happens on the surface um, determines a lot. And the variety in faces is, is measured in millimeters. I mean, millimeter difference um, creates a lot of variety. So, so that's to start with. So that's like the basic proportion. Now we'll, we'll stick with this, but then we will um, talk about like the forms. Let's do this again. Okay, let's keep the same proportion. So these will be, so again, depending on how simple you want to make it, just knowing the proportions is already uh, helpful. But then of course, there's all sorts of variety to uh, different people. So the actual forms, which may or may not be uh, more or less uh, visible, is that the lips will have this part and the bottom. And again, this is all part of the, the evolution. And so that's kind of how you get a puckered lip. <laughs> Yeah, let's just place the corner of the mouth, and then I have something to say about that, too. So you're gonna get this kind of form. Again, there's a lot of variety to this. The other thing is that usually the corner of the mouth is gonna be a little bit lower than that center line of the of where the lips meet because the mouth is not flat on the face, it's actually uh, protruding, like on a cylinder form. Uh, but we'll see that uh, more in the, the three-quarter view. Um, so that's like the basic shape. And then, again, depending on the style you're going for, because you may not have a lot of shading, but it's still good to know and then, of course, you have this famous indention. And again, this is different to some people, it's more pronounced than others. But most of the time, well, I guess all the time, but again, it depends on how pronounced it is. There's going to be, um, it actually doesn't connect to the upper lip because it comes out. There's like a small form above that, above the lip. And this is gonna, again, depending on the, the nose, it connects differently. Okay, and then same with the, the lower lip. Um, this is different for everyone depending on the, the form, uh, but it will have, uh, it will go in right here. And then again, depending on the structure of the chin, um, there's gonna be shading.
So one thing about proportion is that it's tempting to cheat the proportion, but the more you detail it, um, the more you realize that the how important it actually is. So it's not meant to limit you. It's meant for you to understand and and adjust if you want, but you have to know, but like what you're adjusting is actually the the proportion. You're not adjusting like the surface stuff, like the, the rendering. And I'm talking about in terms of drawing, which is the purpose of these videos. Um, so now that we kind of set this up, let's do it in, a three quarter view, still keeping the same proportion. You can set it up the same way. Um, uh, but then, let's see. So go ahead and indicate a little bit of where the different proportions would be. But then, like the main thing is to give some room for the, the bottom lip and the chin is like one of the big things. If you put the mouth too low, it'll, it'll throw off like the whole face. Um, but let's say this is the mouth and then we're saying that this is the nose. And if this is the center line in perspective, um, there's usually gonna be when you're, when you're setting up the the face like this. That's why it's drawn as a curve in perspective. Like that. Because there is a curve. So with that said, um, if we're saying that this is the nose, then the mouth, the center of the mouth will be off of that. So let's go over the, see, so you can have depending on the, so this would be the nostrils, um, depending on the shape of the mouth and then the, the style. Um, the actual center of the mouth is coming off that center line. So there's some things that we can talk about here. Um, one is that there's a cylindrical form and the contour of it let's say that the, the so this is the center line but then the actual contour of the lips and then this so that's the contour of it and then this outer contour is different for everybody because uh, I've been calling it surface anatomy, which is probably the the best term for it. I used to just say the the skin and the fat, <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically surface ana anatomy um, will also affect like this. And you can skip a lot of this construction stuff, but you have to understand why you're drawing what you're drawing. So same with this right here. Um, so again, proportions are the same, even if the surface anatomy is different. Okay. 
the other thing is, let's do this again here. Let's draw the, um, let's say this is still the nose here. So this is a cylindrical form for the mouth. Uh, so the mouth is a little bit above the, the middle. It's not exactly at the middle. Again, part of that is the reasoning there is, or the reason <laughs> is that um, it is on a cylinder, so it's going to be higher up, but then the corner of the mouth can be lower, closer to the middle. Um, and that's because, again, the, the teeth, like you've got teeth here, um, come out and and then the flesh affects things which is why it looks like that so now that we kind of covered sort of the the lips and like the the mouth area we'll talk about sort of the surrounding forms because that's important too. And we haven't even done the expressions of the mouth because it's the most mobile thing on the face. It moves a lot and it's worthy of study. So I haven't started a timer, which I should, but it's kind of too late now. But um, usually if I do another row of drawings, it'll be 15 minutes, which I feel probably works the best for this kind of video, but, uh, but in any case, so yeah, we've done the, um, well, before I move on to like the surrounding areas, let's do a profile. It's always good. Um, so again, let's put down our proportions and they're going to be so again if this is the center we're saying this is the nose they're going to be the same proportions but the shapes will be different so profiles are always very interesting to me because it's just like an interesting perspective interesting way to see but generally speaking, if the mouth is right here, a little bit above that center there, depending on the skull structure, um, which is affected by like the angle here um, and the, the surface anatomy, like we were saying. But generally speaking, the upper lip will be over the lower although not always. Um, but think about how they work and why. Again, with the um, kind of this shape, because what's happening is that the mouth is here, but the lips are on top of the teeth. Um, and then you have the upper and the lower, but there's actually a, a kind of a roundedness there. And then depending on the person, you have this, the, um, whatever that's called, <laughs> the, the dimple. <laughs> and then same thing kind of here at the, the lower lip and then the chin. Let's do a female, so that looks like a male. And that's something to think about too, like why. In general, you're gonna have like not as full lips, stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm sort of giving you, like I'm, I'm calling it tips, so it's, it's worthy of study. 
but this is meant to help you to to draw um where were we okay so the nose so let's kind of look at like the different how it would be i mean i'll say that this is like a female profile but there's just a lot of variety to it and it's just kind of interesting to see why so uh, anyway <laughs> so this is the mouth and then if we're talking about like fullness then it isn't just like the size of the lips but also you tend to get more of this if there's more um, surface like stuff going on here more roundedness but this can change the size of the lips can actually be different um, but the the fullness of it is is still there. Same with the nose, it tends to not be as prominent. Even if it kind of has the same shape, it'll have more of a like kind of a smaller look. But again, that's for you to to study and figure out. Same with the chin. I mean, there's like reasons. Again, it's it's like skeletal structure. Um, it's not going to be as chiseled. And I mean, it could be argued that this could also be like like a male, but just look at the difference. Just like you can exaggerate this, you can exaggerate like this. So go more. Like, it could be more... Like that. Or... The other way would be, like... Hardly any lips. And then a really strong chin. The... The Dick Tracy look. But again, the proportions are still basically the same. So let's move on to the, the profile. I mean, <laughs> we were just doing the profile. Let's move on to the um, like other details, other forms of the mouth. So since I accidentally made this mark here, let's um, let's just use that. So yeah, some other forms of the mouth is, um, let's make this the mouth. So we set up this, the, the mouth and like the chin and everything, but let's say you just wanted to draw the lips. Um, you can just kind of, Put down a line there and uh, that's the middle I went over that um, so you've got you may not even need to draw this depending on how simple you want to make it usually when you draw this let's say you go like this so those are like parentheses you could go like this and that's kind of like even lighting where these are the shadows here so you've got light kind of coming from both sides of the face but then let's kind of do the same thing just draw a mouth but then if you go, if you decide that, okay, light's coming from this side and you go like this, and then you kind of make
make this a little bit more pronounced. Yeah, you might get a shadow on that, but then not so much here, depending on how you want to render it. Um, if you want to make it kind of dramatic, you might get this kind of thing. And keep in mind that depending on how, if you're going to use a pen and ink technique, you have to use it kind of across all of the forms, otherwise it'll look like a mustache, which is um, like this, for example. Like that's the difference. And then if you draw the mustache on this side, I mean, if the lighting is pretty even, it'll just be the same on both sides. Just like if I were to go in and cross hatch in here, um, it would look like a mustache. So the values is what's what's causing that to happen. If it's even across all of it, then it won't look like facial hair. Um, let's do that again. So it's kind of fun to just draw different mouths. Um, and then in the next video, I'll do like the different expressions of like opening and stuff. But like I said, it, it is a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on in the mouth area. So it's good to just like play around with that. And then if you want to change the lighting, so, um, well, one thing is, let's say um, the lighting is more down, down like at the bottom here. So that means that you can kind of do this and then the lights hitting and as far as like, if you were to shade the lips, this part is going to get, because remember that it's coming out. That's why these forms are important, because when you go to shade it, you'll see that this part protrudes. Um, so you can play around with the the shading that way and then if the light is coming from this direction can you see that it's coming down from this direction um, again depending on how pronounced that the parentheses <laughs> I don't know what the anatomical name is the divot um, it may get a little bit of lighting you could probably leave it out and then um, if the lighting's coming from beneath then this will the bottom of the nose will be lit and then the top of the nose will have more definition I mean more shadowing Uh, what else before we sign off here? I think um, I'll do a little bit more sketching and then I wanted to go over the painting of the faces that I did yesterday because I ended up doing <laughs> painting more than just the nose, just painted the whole face. Let's talk about the lips, and I'll, and I'll do it in a, um, let's say you wanted to sketch it real quick. So one thing about like when it's in perspective is this side will be, will look kind of dramatically uh, shorter because it's actually curving and then the corner of the mouth. So it's actually curving away, so it'll look a little bit more um, dramatic in perspective because it's not a straight line. 
so what i mean is like see and then not only that but like this part of the lip is protruding so sometimes it'll hide a lot of that corner depending on how um, the shape of the lips are so from this view let's just kind of talk about shading um, depending on the light let's pretend that this light right here uh, is the light that we're going to use so this is going to be lit up but you may still get an indicator because because that's coming out um, same with um like this bottom lip here you're gonna get a pretty pronounced like under shadow right there so notice that just by doing this you're, you're showing where that light's coming from So usually you get some shading on the nostrils. If the light's on that far side, you're gonna get um, a cast shadow. And again, depending on this, you might just get like one line there, um, which is something to think about. And it's a little different whenever you are painting you might get some of that and then now what's the difference between painting the face and then um, like just drawing it it one is that it's not is that when you add color to it like there may not be a lot there could be a lot of color but not a lot of like value change um, there the brightness and the darkness of it. That's something to think about. And then as far as like the lips, so that's another kind of thing. So let's say you shade this. Um, you can hint at that form. Same with the lips here, the bottom lip. And so you're indicating that this kind of comes out more, like is a rounder form than the upper lip. Again, on the corners of the mouth, there's a lot of like nuance to it, which we can go over. But I don't mind talking about them drawing the mouth for a while um, like over a few videos because there's a lot of stuff going on and I just kind of feel like if you can draw the mouth you can kind of draw anything on the face because the mouth is doing a lot more uh, complex stuff so I was saying about like this area usually it's not going to connect right here because it's going to catch the light like that this upper edge here is usually going to catch a highlight okay uh, yeah before I sign off I think that's pretty good right here so I have stuff to to sketch with um, so as far as like color you'll notice I mean I use these crazy neon colors part of that is just I felt like it and part of it is because um, that's pretty much all I can do with the, the markers I have and um, but notice like the values are still there um, but as far as like the color I mean uh, it's not meant to be realistic but you it still is okay um, it kind of goes with my so I did a short of this in case you didn't check that out and then it's kind of in the style of the Blade Runner video that I did because I use the same markers. 
But yeah, hopefully uh, that was helpful. It helped me out to go over these things. And before I sign off, thank you for joining me for today and supporting the channel. And until next time, keep on sketching.